Hello, I'm Alexandra Coglin, and today I'm in the Glyndebourne Archive to explore Igor Stravinsky's The Rake's Progress. Stravinsky composed The Rake's Progress after he'd emigrated to America in 1939. It was then that he first conceived the idea of writing an opera in English. But it was in 1947 when he visited Chicago to attend an exhibition of Hogarth's sequence of paintings, The Rake's Progress, that he really knew that he'd found his subject matter. The Rake's Progress premiered in 1951, but if we compare it to other works premiered that year, pieces by Boulez, by Morton Feldman, by Stockhausen, it occupies a very different tonal landscape. Why? Well, the roots of this opera extend back to World War II. This, of course, was a turning point for so many artists. They were faced with an essential dilemma. How, in a world that has changed fundamentally and forever, could you go on writing the same kind of music, producing the same kind of art? W.H. Auden described The Rake's Progress as a mixture of fairy tale and medieval morality play, and it's an opera that walks a very fine line between comedy and tragedy. We open in the countryside where we meet young Tom Rakewell. He's happy, he's engaged to the beautiful Anne Truelove, but he's bored and he certainly has no intention of getting a job, as his father-in-law-to-be would really quite like. Fortunately, at this moment, a stranger, Nick Shadow, appears with a tale of a mysterious inheritance. Tom immediately follows him to London and finds himself plunged into the temptations of the big city. He sleeps with a prostitute, he marries a bearded lady, and he invests all of his money in a machine that promises to turn stones into bread. But the scheme fails, Tom is destitute, and is driven mad by Nick Shadow, who eventually reveals himself to be the devil himself. The progress of a rake begins. John Cox and David Hockney's production premiered at Glyndebourne in 1975 and it has never left the repertoire. Since then it has toured all around the world and has established itself as the definitive take on Stravinsky's opera. Mr. John Cox and David Hockney's production of The Rake's Progress premiered at Glyndebourne in 1975. John Cox was a regular here by that point, but how did the collaboration with Hockney come about? So Hockney was asked by John Cox, who wanted a new contemporary artist to design the production. And Hockney had already produced a series of engravings between 1961 and 1963 called A Rake's Progress. They were inspired by Hogarth's original engravings, which Hockney had previously seen. And in terms of the style of the, the designs and how they relate to the music, can you talk me through the, the visual identity of the production? Yeah, so the whole point of Hockney's design is that it, it looks like a living Hogarth. And then the colours that he uses in that are, are also super key to the, um, the whole production. So he uses greens, reds, blues and black. And they were colours that were also available for printing presses during Hogarth's time. And Hockney initially said that he listened to the original score and heard the colours come through. And that's such a lovely image, he's sitting in LA with all those Hockney colours that we know from those paintings, the really dazzling you know, blues and, and sunlight, and thinking about this very English creation with these much softer colours. Yeah, and LA is really important to the whole, whole production as well, because not only did Hockney go to LA to, to sit and design with his assistant Mo McDermott, who was also a theatre designer. He took a room at the Chateau Marmont, which Stravinsky also stayed in. And of course, The Rake's Progress was written in LA as well. So it's a very English opera, but with a little American accent. Yeah, as Hockney himself says, uh, it's probably the most important opera ever written in Hollywood. We do hope you'll be able to join us this autumn to enjoy this stylish, much-loved Glyndebourne classic. Oh.